Hi, my name is Buyar Marava and I'm a senior consultant with Machineering. In previous chapters, we have talked about the type of supplemental damping systems and how are they implemented in the real practice to deliver the desired performance. Today, we will specifically focus on their contribution on improving a wide range of serviceability performance indexes. In addition to the motion control, implementation of damping systems in high rise building and slender buildings improve also provide additional benefits such as those that have to do with better control of uh, drift, lateral displacement, improvement of performance and functionality of elevators and uh, elevator cables, and furthermore, they do also contribute in the long-term performance of facade and uh, extension of the fatigue life of the building. Buildings uh, under uh, wind action sway quite a bit and for a long time. And uh, with all the sways uh, left and right under wind, the stresses into the uh, structural system of the building accumulate quite a bit. And depending on uh, the uh, longevity of, and, and quality of, of the materials and the level of stresses, the more you uh, reduce the magnitude of those stresses, the better life fatigue-wise can be delivered for the, the main lateral system of the building, as well as for the facade uh, members. Implementation of a supplemental damping system also uh, have a positive contribution in improving the functionality and performance, uh, vibration uh, performance of the cables elevators. That uh, is through the reduction of, again, the uh, displacement of the building under wind action. Once you implement the damping system, then with the action of the damper, the displacement of the building, sway displacement of the building reduce, and therefore, the impact on the, uh, the cable uh, vibration is reduced as well. In particular for tune slushing dampers, it's important to uh, keep in mind the integration of uh, damping system into fire suppression system. It's a dual purpose of this system which saves costs in the project as well as addresses, in addition to motion control, also the fire suppression uh, requirement and capacity of water needed to, for the building. One of the, uh, the ways to enhance the architectural design of uh, landmark buildings is the integration of a supplemental damping system that is required uh, to control the wind-induced motion into architectural design. The, uh, that solution, instead of hiding a damper system within a room in a box inside the building, you expose it. The great examples of those projects are Taipei 101 in Taiwan, where the uh, tune mass damper is also integrated as an architectural feature into the building. And also a, a big advantage on these kind of solu solutions where the dampers are exposed and accessible by the public is that this, uh, this kind of integration also allows the ownership developers to also generate additional revenue to creating this kind of attraction where the public comes and visit and gets also an understanding how these high-end technologies serve uh, buildings better. And also Shanghai Tower, one a landmark project in China, where the supplemental damping system designed a implemented, tuned and commissioned by motioneering. It's also integrated uh, as an architectural feature in display for the public. Actually, a implementation of a damping system is not limited to a new designs of high-rise buildings or a skyscrapers. This technology can be used as well to improve the serviceability performance of existing buildings with known um, uh, wind-induced motions. 
In the other two chapters, we'll talk about the other types of structures that use dampers, and these structures are bridges and floors. My name is Buyar Morava, a senior consultant with Motioneering, and I look forward to working with you on your project.